We can also use primary amines as nucleophiles to attack carbonyls. the tetrahedral intermediate that forms. So nitrogen now is making four bonds, which it doesn't like, and so it will have a positive charge. We can have a proton trans. One of these hydrogens can get trans up to the oxygen. And now oxygen is protonated. This is a carbonolamine. And usually these reactions are done in the presence of some sort of acid. So this oxygen can grab the proton. And that is now protonated. And as you'll recall, water is a good leaving group. In this case, nitrogen can form a double bond to carbon and kick the water off. So it's going to do that. I'm just going to draw this so it's not upside down. So water was lost here. Water was lost there. And we had A- minus that was kicked off before can grab a proton. And this is an imine. If you have a primary imine, the nitrogen atom loses a proton directly and it will form an imine, which we did already. So this is the proton that got picked up here. If you have a secondary imine, the neighboring carbon is going to lose a proton. The hydrogen that gets picked up is this one here. It'll form this double bond, and these electrons go back onto the nitrogen. And the double bond is formed there. This is an ene from the double bond amine. If you do this reaction with RNH2, you form this compound here, and then you lose that proton to form the imine. If you have two R's, then you form this compound, and then you lose the proton that's next door, and you form the enamine. If you have an NH2NH2 in the presence of acid, you will lose water. and form this compound. You then add KOH plus water and heat. And now we've reduced this compound to the cyclohexane when we get nitrogen. This happens in 80% yield. So this is another way to reduce a carbonyl to an alkane. So in this reaction, it's gonna grab a proton, One of these can attack here. That N is positive because it's got four bonds. Because it's got four bonds, we can do a proton transfer. So one of the hydrogens from the nitrogen can go on to that OH. That's now our leaving group. This will form the double bond nitrogen. We get a proton transfer. That's going to get picked up. And now we have that intermediate. We add KOH to this. That grabs a proton and those electrons go on to the nitrogen. So these electrons will go in here, and those electrons go on to that carbon. So these structures are in resonance with each other. Where there's a minus charge here, 
that can pick up a proton from water. And then KOH that is added, our base, can grab this proton on the end here. We form N2, and the electrons go onto that carbon. So that was released as gas, and then we have a negative charge here. Another proton transfer, and we get cyclohexane. And this is a mechanism that you do not need to memorize. Things that you want to think about with these mechanisms, there's a lot of similarities between the acid catalyzed mechanisms that we discussed. The carbonyl gets protonated first. It makes the carbonyl more electrophilic. Usually we try to avoid negative formal charge on the intermediate when the acid is present. You also want to avoid high energy intermediates with two formal charges. The acid usually protonates leaving groups so that it's stable and can be neutral when it leaves. In most cases, water is acting as our leaving group. And the last step of the mechanism usually involves a proton transfer, which forms a neutral product. So overall, under acidic conditions, the reaction species should either be neutral or have a plus one charge. Once you form an acetal, we can add water and acid in order to deprotect it to reform the ketone and get those two alcohols back. So I did mention that you could draw those arrows backwards and we're actually going to do that right now. So when you have an acetal, it's going to react with the acid and do a proton transfer first. We get a proton transfer first and these are all reversible arrows. We've got a leaving group here. This wants to form a double bond. Those electrons come down to form this double bond and that gets kicked off. So we lose our OH here. That's positively charged. And we have water that can act as the nucleophile. That's positive. Gonna do a proton transfer, so one of these Water hydrogens will shift over to there. We've got this good leaving group again. So these electrons will come down. That will leave, so we lose minus ROH. We get a proton transfer to reform the carbonyl. When you hydrolyze an imine or an enamine, we're also going to get that carbonyl back. So we just do the cleave here. That's going to get the oxygen back there, plus our NH2. This will cleave there, because remember the adjacent proton was the one that was abstracted. So we get this carbonyl plus R2NH. If you have an acetal under basic conditions, there's no reaction. So we can only remove the acetal under acidic conditions. Or we can use thiols as protecting groups. The process is the same, except now we have SR as our groups. If your SHs are connected, we will get a cyclic structure just like before. If you have the carbonyl and you protect it with the SH compound, this ethane dithiol, you follow it with rainy nickel we get cyclohexane. So this is the protection and also we can remove that group there. So this is another protecting group that you can use and then you can remove the thioacetal without going through other compounds. Hydrogen can be used as nucleophile, which we've already seen, a carbonyl with lithium aluminum hydride gets us the alcohol. We can use sodium borohydride to get the same thing. Lithium aluminum hydride again with the carbonyl. This gets us the OH group. We've seen Grignard reactions with aldehydes as well as esters. If you wanted to add the carbon nucleophile to all of these here, 
we would need three equivalents. OH. One equivalent would get added here. That would get protonated. This would get protonated. This would get protonated, and we would add two of those equivalents there. So three equivalents are necessary if you have that many groups. Something else that we can do with carbonyls is to react them with the nitrile. If you have this C nucleophile here, that can attack here. We form a carbon-carbon bond. This is not a good leaving group, so that's not going to go anywhere. That will just pick up a proton. This is a cyanohydrin. They can be toxic. And volatile. That would be a disadvantage, but it does come in handy in synthesis. If you had this nitrile after you made the cyanohydrin, you can reduce that. That would give you the amine. Or you can react it with acid and heat and form the carboxylic acid. We can also do Wittig reactions with carbonyls. This involves a carbon nucleophile. And this carbon right here gets put right here. So this is another way to form a carbon-carbon bond. So this can also be written as triphenylphosphine that is double bonded to CH2. That would be a resonance structure of that. But when we have this, we can think of this acting as the nucleophile. So this nucleophile will attack here. And at the same time, these electrons will grab onto the phosphorus. So this is an oxyphosphatane. And these electrons can go to form the double bond. And these will go on to there. And there's the product. In order to make this elid, which is that C minus compound with phosphorus, you start with triphenylphosphine and add an alkyl halide. So that forms there, and phosphorus is positively charged. You then add N butyl lithium. Which is also written as N butyl lithium. This C is negative. It's going to grab a proton from here, and that will put the negative on the carbon. And here is your elid. So with this reaction, once you've had this alkyl halide, you add the triphenylphosphine with the m lithium. You react these two together. What you can do is now form a double bond to this compound. So it's a very useful reaction, which we will be seeing in lab. Another reaction that you can do with a carbonyl is a bayer wilker which makes an ester using peroxide. See so electrons from here attack the carbonyl. That's now positively charged. We get a proton transfer from here to there. That's still negative. And this wants to reform the carbonyl. And when it does that, it does a strange thing. 
this R group will actually jump on to the oxygen. This bond breaks here. These go on to the oxygen. So we get this rearrangement. So my oxygen formed a new double bond. I formed, broke this bond onto the oxygen, the oxygen. So I have O and then the R plus carboxylic acid. So in this case, if the carbonyl is asymmetrical, we use the following chart to determine which migrates most readily. So H will go first. If you had an aldehyde, the hydrogen will migrate to form the carboxylic acid followed by tertiary groups, secondary and phenyl are tied, primary and methyl is the least likely to shift over. So in this reaction here, we have this per acid with this group here. This is a methyl versus a secondary. The secondary is gonna be the one to shift. So I have an O. That would be the product there. So an oxygen is inserted between a carbonyl carbon and the neighboring group. If we look at what we can do with carbonyls now, if you have cyanide plus HCl, There's an OH here and the nitrile. With the Wittig, we're going to form a new carbon bond. And with the Grignard, which we've seen before, we're just going to add a carbon. So give necessary reagents to make the carbonyl below from an alkyne and also from an alkyl halide without altering the number of carbons. So if we were going to do it from an alkyne, You have that and use 9 BBN. OH minus. That gets the aldehyde, and now we have to do it from an alkyl halide. Convert it to the alcohol. and PCC. All right, here we're going to form an acetal. We have an alcohol in the presence of acid. We have to draw the mechanism. Grab a proton. These are reversible steps. One of these is going to add here. everything came along, we're going to get a proton transfer to transfer this out to protonate this alcohol. This will form a double bond that leaves as water. This is positive, that's a good electrophile. This is going to attack here. And we get a proton transfer. And that will be the product. Okay, so this is going to form an enamine. We have a carbonyl with a secondary amine. It will form that. This hydrogen will get picked up. Form the enamine. All right, so Wittig reagents, that's the one with the phosphorus. It's gonna come from a carbonyl. So you break the bond there, so you could make it 
from this reagent, where this is negative plus the pPH3. So these two could form that. Or this could be the carbonyl. And that is the pPH3 minus part. Now here, carbonyl plus sodium cyanide, we get a cyanohydrin. Acid's going to break up the acetal. This will be an OH. The carbon here that has two oxygens bound to it, that's going to be your carbonyl carbon. And then methanol will also be in there. Secondary amine plus carbonyl, we're going to form an enamine. This is an alcohol plus an aldehyde. We'll get an acetal formation. And then primary amine with the carbonyl, we'll get the amine. So Wittig, that would form the alkene. Then you could do H2 palladium. In this one here, we're forming an ester. This should be a hydrogen here. And here you would just do the bayer billiger So you can use peracid. You could also use MCPBA. Here we have an alcohol plus a nitrogen. So you do NaCN with water, followed by excess lithium aluminum hydride. So you form the nitrile and then reduce that with lithium aluminum hydride. This one here, we're adding a carbon and doing a carboxylic acid. So you could use the Wittig. That would add the carbon. Add an alcohol there. And then oxidize it using the Jones reagent. So those are the chapter 20 problems.
four reagents here. We could do the Wittig followed by a reduction. 